Um, right now, my focus is is like you know learning to install what we have what we have going in, and you know just getting not being comfortable, but you know it's a, it's always a different feel every week. Like this this year, I was this year this time last year I was it was like Nick was starting. It's like okay, I still need to know everything, but you know I'm kind of like in the distance. But now it's like you need to know everything, and you need to make sure. Everybody else in the room knows everything. Just being a, having that responsibility is something that's that's different. And you know, driving down the street because I live I live down River Road, and then you see you start to see like those porta potties come out and everything else, and you're like, okay, it's game time. And then everybody's on campus, and all cars are everywhere. You're like, I can't park anywhere. So now you know it's game week. It's it's it's, it's pretty cool. You know, actually being right there on River Road and, and kind of like seeing Tiger Stadium driving all the way up to school and whatnot. It's, I like it. How many pass routes have you run this summer? Countless. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to give you a number because even even on like Saturdays, Joe and I would come in with, with the receivers in the morning and uh and we, we would get, I mean, depending on what time, we, I told them like, hey, I don't have anything else to do until like, you know, this evening. So as long as as long as you, your arm is good to throw, I'm running routes. So, I mean, even like, you know, every Saturday, countless, countless routes. You're more of the passing now. How much are the running backs really going to be involved in this offense just in terms of, you know, you guys are going to spread now, but mm -hmm. is there still going to be that emphasis? Is there still going to be that, that, that reliability for you guys to carry the workload running the ball? LS, when you hear LSU, do you think running the ball? We still, we still, we still run the ball at LSU. And, uh, you know, you can ask, you can ask Coach Odette, you can ask Coach, Coach E, you can ask, Joe, Coach Joe Brady, and uh, you know he doesn't—he doesn't always like the running aspect, but um, you know we, we will run the ball and we will catch the ball. Um, I, I I don't want to give like a percentage on what is like what what and what because you know it, it's according to the game plan and, and who we're playing and you know every scenario that's 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 being displayed uh, from the defense. So we run the ball, we throw the ball. Running backs will catch the ball. Running backs will run the ball. So it's, I mean, I don't want to say like you gotta wait and see, like give you that suspense, but I mean, you kind of kind of gotta wait and see. What's, <laughs> what's your comfortability in just in terms of being now kind of uh, more involved in passing? I'm, I mean, it's it's se it's second nature for me. I, I caught, I lined up in the slot. I lined up outside receiver even in high school, and um, you know this is, it's just like it's just home like. They say, hey, get in, you know, they call a formation and the running back gets in the slot and I'm I'm perfectly fine. Like I see the route, I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is a piece of cake. Like I, I get excited a lot of the times when I when I get to line up in the slot because I know like areas of my game I can I can always like I can pretty much be anywhere on the field and, and make things happen. And you know, even you know, Coach O saying get get playmakers in the space to make plays and that's you know, I've I've said it before, but when I heard that like bell went off my head my eyes lit up because I was like getting me in space that's like that's where I live at and and, and I love having one-on-ones with guys you know just em embarrassing guys uh making a miss so you know I, I I love it and you know can't wait to display it on Saturday night talked about um last year when you came in you know mixed the start and took out everything now you're the lead guy what are you trying to just talk to the younger backs about is there Know, knowing everything, because you don't know, you you have no idea when it's going to be your time, and you know, uh, even freshman year, my freshman year, Darius and Darrell was running the ball, uh, BYU game, and I got in BYU game, not expecting to get in because I'm thinking like, okay, we we have some backs to go until I get in, at, but you know, I needed to know the install, I needed to know everything that week in order to be comfortable enough to get in the game, and. Like I told them, like if you know if you know everything, it, it works out because I don't think we're going to deviate much, uh, you know, in the future from the offense that that we're running, you know, from from years down the line. So, you know, if they if they know things and know the concepts and know everything about this offense, I mean, next year, next year, years after, and, and years after that, like everything's going to be a piece of cake for those guys, and it's going to be second nature. Then you can display your talent, and you don't have to think as much uh, when you're in the game. What do those younger guys? What you say? I Look at the younger backers already standing out as one of those guys. 
it's, it's like, you know, they you have Ty who's, you know, six or whatever, 226 or 230 or whatever he is, and then you have John with, with his elusiveness. So you can't say, okay, I like this guy better than this guy because they, they're they two different running backs, and literally every running back in the room is, is different. Like, you, you're not going to say, okay, well, we see, we see the same things in Clyde and, and Ty or Clyde and John because everybody runs different. And whatever situation, you know, Coach James Mingo or Coach Joe, like, they would say, okay, I want this guy in for this play because I know his skill set. I know I know what we're looking at. I know what, and I know that they can make that happen. So, um, you know, having having a, a a running back room with so many guys that that like pretty much like they like they don't run the same is something like that's you have you know numerous things in in there like they have they can do whatever they want with us in order to to make the ball move or get us up and down the field um, as far as the running back position. We've been having some fun uh, joking with <laughs> about, about Tory Carter, your uh, oh, yeah. fullback, Joe says he's from the 1940s, and you hear about the heavy metal music and the, the eye blacks and yeah. all that. I mean, <laughs> people say they got crazy or what? I mean, just a fiery uh, fullback. Yeah, but like away from here, like Tory is cool. Like that's like that like that's one like that's one of my best friends. I came in, Tori and I was uh like we were coming like a couple of guys. We were like the only two guys with sports cars. He had a charger, I had a Mustang. And from that point kinda like pulling up, he was like like we were like best friends. Uh we stayed, you know, in WCA up and downstairs from each other, so we were I was always with him. Um and I knew Baton Rouge. He didn't, so I kinda introduced him to everybody and like and now even with me moving, Tori and I still stay like two minutes away from me. Like we're literally down the street from each other. So, like you know, he's my he's a fullback and he's like my best friend. We were together in the backfield, uh, came in together, and I mean, yeah, he's from, he's he's like from the nineteen forties, but he has a different little vibe to it, and I and, and, and I and I like him. I love him. Clyde, you're the Southern three four defense. Mm -hmm. You got three four defense. Yep. And they're different. Mm -hmm. Um, like in that aspect, I uh, I see a three four defense and I, like I've watched them on film, and then I do my comparisons as far as okay this guy is more like, you know this guy on the defense and this guy is more like this guy and so I can try to visualize you know what I'm saying some of the things that I do in practice and like I might be like okay I, I know I can put this move on this guy so nine times out of ten I feel like it's gonna work when I put it in the game but like so. Always, like Coach O, like we have like our heartbeat meeting, and one of the aspects of it is close your eyes and visualize yourself making plays. And I would, you know, close my eyes, visualize their numbers, you know, their colors, like everything, and I mentally make the play against that defense or that person in in, in this situation. Um, and I feel, I feel like that's that's like a plus as far as seeing a three four defense at practice and then working going into the work week still seeing the same defense that's I mean it, it doesn't get any better than that especially when you've been going against a 3-4 defense the entire camp so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about Joe that. Joe said it's pretty much straight up though right? Yeah yeah do anything crazy yeah offense, yeah everything straight up seen. yeah yeah especially for for my position like um I make a lot of my thing I, I make a lot of my thought processes are off of the safeties whatever the safeties do you know running backs you know coach T. Rob is his thing is Read the safeties and the, and the safe, read the safeties and, and, and the defense turns into a book. So, you know, I read the safeties and whatever the safeties do, I, I do my checks and everything off the safeties. So it's pretty straightforward. Going back to making plays, uh, Daryl Williams was uh, he he is the only uh, running back in LSU history to rush for 100 yards and, and uh, have 100 yards receiving in a game. With this new offense, do you think you could be the next uh, LSU running back to have both in a single game? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, and I'm I mean, you know I, I watched Daryl that game, and uh, you know and and when they said it, it was like okay, like that was yeah this was a legit performance, like I was here to watch it, and it was like that might that might not ever happen again, and then when they bring this this offense into that aspect, it's like okay, well you know Daryl had his time, so it, it might be it might be time to change that. <laughs> so what is that Georgia game? Um, 
Um, I've, I've always felt like, uh, you know, against any SEC defense, because I remember being on, on scout team and then having to, you know, run against Art and, and, and Donnie Alexander. Like, I like I did some scout team stuff against some guys, and they would always be like, well, we'd go, we'd go in the cold tub afterwards, and they'd be like, bro, we hate tackling you. Like, we hate the fact that when you're in the game. And that made me feel good because it felt like, okay, I know for a fact this is the best defense in the SEC. And if I can do this at practice and these guys think that way, and they see me at practice every day, when guys can't make an adjustment to me the same day in the game, I mean, I always felt like, okay, I can I can go in the SEC and, and, and play every down and, and gash defenses. So Georgia game was was, was a was a big deal um, for me and even afterwards. But uh, more importantly, like, about that game, uh, Coach Ensminger went into it just pretty much telling me get the extra yard. He always, he felt like if I fought for the extra yard, things would pop. And like, sure enough, one of my longest runs came off just extra effort, uh, breaking a tackle. And then before I knew it, it was it was just like oh, nothing in front of me and it was open field. So, um, you know, Coach Ensminger instilled that in my head Monday morning and, and it, it, it ended up working out Saturday night, Saturday midday. <laughs>